The People Before is a 1963 short story by Maurice Shadbolt. The People Before is from the first-person point of view, divided into three sections. The short story depicts the return visit of the Maori to the Pakeha's home, suggesting the themes of ownership of land, memory, and generational shifts. The Maori are the indigenous people of New Zealand predating the arrival of European settlers while the Pakeha are the white New Zealanders of European origin. The people before explores the tension between different ideas about land ownership and the lack of understanding between Jim's family and the Maori history of the land. The story begins with the Pakeha's family introduction about how the narrator's father took possession of the land by sweat and legal title as he bought the place for a song but he now he could sell out for a packet. Jim's father cleared the unkempt land for farming by cutting down the bushes and to hack them down, grub out the roots, before they could spread, symbolizing his uncaring attitude towards the land's history. Jim discovered greenstone adzes on the hills near his family's farm that belonged to the Maori people, who lived there long ago. This discovery revealed a hidden history of the land that the farm is on. Jim's father doesn't appreciate the historical or cultural significance of the greenstone his son found disregarding it as Maori stuff but he only interested in might be some money to be gained from selling the valuable stones. He shows off the farm to the visitors and calls it his green kingdom but the way he talks about ownership is all about monetary value and legal rights, which is different from how the Maori people view land. When the Maori people arrived, Jim's father realized that the people before weren't the Pakeha settlers he got the land from, but the original indigenous inhabitants who have a deep connection to the land. There's a subtle awareness of how the Maori settlement was forcibly ended when the Europeans took the land. Tom Taikaka and his Maori group are pleasantly polite, patient, and respectful as to not troubling the current landowners. Even though they're essentially asking for permission to cross the farmer's land to reach the neglected hills where their ancestors once lived. On the other hand, the farmer is initially suspicious and standoffish, addressing them as you people and refusing to shake hands. This meeting reflects the post-colonial reality of land ownership governed by Pakeha laws, making the Maori as petitioners. Tom, who is comfortable with English and has an English first name alongside his Maori family name, understands this dynamic. He accepts Jim's offer of the greenstone adzes as a gesture of reparation, but he ultimately returns them begrudgingly. Accepting that the adzes now belong to Jim and that he has got no claims to the land any longer. This shows how the Maori are forced to accept their dispossession. Tom, despite never visiting the place before, knows the land's features and history of the Maori tribe's generational battles through oral folk traditions. Tom's arrival with an elder to see their homeland in his final days and when the old man recognizes the hill of the paw, it sparks new life in him, highlighting the deep and lasting connection between the Maori and their ancestral land. In the story's beginning, the narrator and his brother Jim find bones and a human skull in a cave, hinting at the elder's death. Upon their return, Tom informs the farmer family of the old man's passing and how they left him in the hills, suggesting their journey was about honoring the elder and reinforcing the Maori's strong bond with the land, regardless of changes in time and legal ownership. In spite of an extensive police search, the burial site remains a mystery. It seems fitting for the elder's burial in his birthplace, emphasizing his deep connection to the land, which, although neglected, holds immense value to him. During World War II, Jim, who was once excited about the greenstone discovery in Tom's tales, found comfort in thoughts of their family's old place, but he now talks about these memories casually, considering that old Maori and those greenstones as mere souvenir that he seemingly tried to give away. The narrator sacrificed his education to work on the farm with their father enabling his younger brother to become a university lecturer while still claiming a connection to the farm in an indifferent manner, making the narrator feel like dispossessed in a sense.